Welcome to a new video of Oppermann.com. I'm here today with a living legend, Dante Del Vecchio himself, the uh, Pineider writing instrument guy. And um, today we wear the masks, but since we're here in a social distancing place, we will just remove it because otherwise it will be difficult to do this interview with Dante. So, um, Dante, thank you so much for having us and uh, welcoming us, showing the, showing the situation over here and uh, sharing your thoughts. Um, but before we start the interview, we always do a pen check first. So, which pen do you carry with you today? First of all, welcome to Florence. Thank you so much. We are very happy to host you mm -hmm. and introduce you to the beauty of Pinider and also, I have to say, to the design of my pens. Yeah, this that's is, where we're here for. <laughs> this is the Blue Bee, mm -hmm. that you know the material is designed to describe arcs. Mm -hmm. in the side when you, when you look at this yeah. is one of my you know when I design the material not the pen because I also design the material that yeah. uh, is made the pen mm -hmm. and uh, the, this is one of my favorite pen because it's very good for daily writing yeah. the clip you know is designed to be a feather mm -hmm. and I designed for Pinider the clip always to be a feather, but it's not a single feather, but it's a collection of feather mm -hmm. that usually refers to the uh, design of the pen. Yeah. It can be a classical feather, a young feather, or highly designed feather, like in the case of the Amman, is a mm -hmm. cutout feather. Yeah. So we like, like to play not only with the pen, but also with the design of the clip, mm -hmm. changing time by time, to always to give something fresh and new, mm -hmm. uh, to have a new mode, not just as you say, changing colors. Yeah, just to do something different each time. Creativity yeah. is something that we work to invent mm -hmm. and uh, work in our beautiful field that it is uh, writing. Yeah, perfect. Um, Pinider has a long history, but uh, with fountain pens, not extremely long. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the history of Pinider and especially about the fountain pens? And why are they so popular? Pinider is, I have to say, one of the oldest brands in Italy overall. Mm -hmm. Because a brand that was founded in 1774, mm -hmm. we're talking about 250 years yeah, of wow. Italy, I can grant you in the Chamber of Commerce of Italy there are not many companies still in business and never stopped after 250 years. Yes, it's amazing. So, so wow. it's definitely something quite mm -hmm. incredible. Yeah. Pinade used to have a nice store in uh, our uh, main uh, city, in Florence. Mm -hmm. So what I call the, is the avatar of Florence. Uh, Florence mm -hmm. is the avatar of Pinade. Yeah. This is They're connected a, to a pen that I like. Yeah. I create it's just on purpose of this because mm -hmm. Really, Pinader is the heart of Florence, yeah. you know. And uh, Florence has been many years one of the most visited, you know, uh, city in Italy. It's still, is one of the top three. It's you beautiful. know, Venice, Florence, and Rome. It's mm -hmm. a classical trip of mm -hmm. any tourist that comes to Italy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's no doubt that uh, Pinader sits in the heritage of Florence. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Pinada has a long history, yeah. has uh, a store, but uh, uh, for some reasons, uh, fountain pen uh, writing history were never, you know, uh, being the top in his in his uh, collection. Mm -hmm. Mostly because uh, more and more I see that the pens without uh, uh, a real love of a single man behind, you get lost. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you look at the history of pens. Uh, even the big brands, I call the big brands the big four, you know, that yeah. were used in the States in the before Second World War. Yeah. We're only living from a founder, you know, think about George Parker yeah. or uh, even Armando Simone of Omas, you know, mm -hmm. being founders, but for a long time was the sound of the, of the brand. Yeah. I look, like myself, I did with Visconti. Yeah. Visconti, I was considered to be the sound of Visconti yeah. until I was in, uh, in that company. So probably uh, what Pinata missed until I arrived here, mm -hmm. just to have a man that was in strictly in love with pens. That's given his passion to the yes, pens. Yes, exactly. Yeah. 
Mm. And uh, when uh, I, I came here about uh, four years ago in, uh, in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. uh, they gave me carte blanche. You, you know, can do everything what you wanted to do. Carte blanche. Yeah. I'd have to say, as a person, I do not accept uh, you know, many com compromise mm -hmm. about my work. <laughs> It's, it's 35 years in pens, and you know that before opening this country, I used to carry a pen store in yeah, Florida. Yeah. So, it's that, uh, add those 35 years of this country, 30 years of this country, 10 years of, 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 of my shop, and yeah. five years in, in, uh, in Pinares. It's That's a, long, a long time. A long time. Yeah, I know. It's a long time. Um, in that long time, uh, how did the writing community change? Oh wow! Yeah, I would like to say that uh, <clears throat> more and more it became something exclusive. Yeah. In uh, when I was in the beginning, it was more a writing tool. Mm -hmm. It became for a long time a collectible tool. Now we are in a changing point. It's difficult to, to forecast what the pen will be. Mm -hmm. Because we have the millennials, the new guy that like we discover pens, yeah. like something new, a huge new thing, yeah. <laughs> incredible. Yeah, something different. <laughs> yeah, something different, something to be discovered. And yeah. this is good because it is young people curiosity, mm -hmm. and uh, this is in one side. In the other side, there are you know, not the old people, but people that know pens. Yeah. And many, many people like to collect pens and, you know, they, they consider the pen like a part of their life. Mm -hmm. You can imagine I have a nice collection of pens, mm -hmm. thousands, <laughs> but a nice collection. Mm -hmm. A few pens from other brands that I like very much, with uh, special, with special nibs, mm -hmm. or uh, not, not, not huge, but nice. Yeah. And... Um, that I like, you know, is, is a part of my life, you know, so I like to be surrounded mm -hmm. from uh, a, a tool of culture, because yeah. don't forget but that uh, a pen is first of all a tool of culture, yeah. since uh, the human people, they first learn how to write and then how to read. <laughs> so, in, that, in that order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, um, so how it's really changed? So first it was like an essential, and now it's more like a luxury to have a fountain pen. Let's say there is no more the essential because you don't need mm -hmm. to write anymore. Yeah. But uh, you can write and the occasion to write are always less and less. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Uh, uh, for many years we've been using the pens to write, uh, you know, to sign, you know, the, the, the card at the restaurant yeah. <laughs> and now That's we want to, to sign electronically yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like killing you know yeah. the, the, the few times that we can use the pen so the pen will be more and more a personal use mm -hmm. uh, you know the difference between a watch and a pen the watch is still sitting in the, in the wrist mm -hmm. so you can show at yeah. the end it's more you like know, a fashion you, item exactly fashion item you can show your passion mm -hmm. and uh, I can use a bike you know I, I know I, I like motorcycle yeah, yeah, I can yeah. ride a bike for my own pleasure yeah. a pen is more even more personal True. because at the end you know you have few occasions to show other people mm -hmm. unless you get a few friends like I have yeah. they come to my home I like to share different models this and that or sometimes you just have fun saying about this brand or the other brand, mm -hmm. this is something that we share the same passion. Yeah. You may, uh, you have to know that I often go in the afternoon to my garage, mm -hmm. like I spend one hour to talk with my mechanic <laughs> about uh, this engine or the other engine or this mm -hmm. the speed and this. Uh, this is just to share the same passion with friends. Yes, this. of course. So besides the motorcycles, do you also have other hobbies that you get your inspiration for from for new designs? My hobbies mostly were I am a very sporty guy. Mm -hmm. I, as I told you privately, I I, you know, I like to do nearly every sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, bicycle. Yeah. You know, motorcycle yeah. that I race still professionally, yeah. and uh, a tennis player, mm -hmm. long time tennis player. Skiing, snowboarding, mm -hmm. 
uh, and this is my my side but I don't get there my inspiration well, the inspiration it... for a pen is my life mm -hmm. yeah. sometimes I, I get around myself and get an inspiration mm -hmm. or I read a book I get an inspiration probably the best example I can make was the uh, the uh, Da Vinci Code yeah. where I was able to design the divine proportion yeah. and this is probably one of the times when a book really inspired me mm -hmm. or for example you know the the uh, Vitruvian man where I designed the square and the circle concept yeah. for a pen so I always go around and see things and then inspire me yeah. this is the easy thing of my job to design pen when you get inspired mm -hmm. the worst that I hate when people come to me and say well, I please don't design a pen for this occasion yeah. and this is I hate yeah. because like to force my creativity yeah. to work in, in, in a direction that they, sometimes I don't even like <laughs> <laughs> so you have some borders that you have to absolutely say, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I can imagine. and very often people tell me that you see this is real you know Look the back to the future or the Arma. Mm -hmm. This is a true Dante pen. Yeah. This is not even, you know, a Pinider pen. This is a lot of myself in that mm -hmm. pen. That's because of that card blanche that you got from Pinider. Uh, it was just, something. you know, uh, uh, writing an history of pens for mm -hmm. uh, the, our shop direct uh, directors. Yeah. And I saw, um, I, was, I was writing, I saw the, that the Carlos was the first writing, probably the very first writing instrument of the human history yeah. and I said I can make a pen out of that. This is just inspiration. Yeah. How many years I, I knew the Calamus? Probably 20 years I know yeah. the Calamus is, but now I got the inspiration. There is a, a, an, expla an explanation, I don't know, yeah. it happens. Yeah. To all my friends, I used to say that uh, I have uh, a tree with the full of ideas in front of my home. When yeah. I need a good idea, I go to the tree and pick up the right one. <laughs> but it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have a lot of trees over there with all that ideas. They say yeah. that somebody wants to come to my home and see which is the right tree. <laughs> I won't tell them. <laughs> no, of course not. Um, you're a legend already yourself, but... Uh, do thank you, you. It's not true, but thank it you is, for that. <laughs> it is true. Uh, but do you uh, do you have a, a hero yourself or an example in a person or a company that you think that you're not? When I started, you know, uh, Visconti, mm -hmm. I was amazed from uh, American history mm -hmm. about pens. Yeah. And particularly, I loved Conklin. Yeah. I loved Conklin pens, and I designed and manufactured Conklin pens for many years. All right. Yeah, for many years. And uh, my American distributor, American distributor, Pinay, that is my, also my close friend. Yeah. We know each other since 25 years. Yes, I, I manufactured pens for them in the mm -hmm. past. And, um, and I was amazed from creative company. Mm -hmm. For example, Wall Eversharp, I like very much because of the personal point of the nibs mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, inventions behind the pen. Yeah. Like the nib, they can regulate the, 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 the thickness of the hardness. Mm -hmm. These are the things that I like. Yeah. And are so, there, is there a person that you see as an example that you think uh, or that you had? Mostly, mostly I, I call example that are the, the founders. Yeah. George Parker is a hero for me. Yeah. Uh, Conklin, Roy Conklin, you know, yeah. is another hero for me. You know, when there is a founder that is able to do what I did in mm -hmm. my life. Because when I started, very few believed that I was able to, to complete, you know, the, 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 the company, to finish the company. Mm -hmm. And they brought this country to be one of the three most important brands yeah. in the world. So Great I think guys. for, yeah. for a guy that I started, you know, without knowing too much, <laughs> <laughs> From a guy with a pen store eventually growing Fiskonti that big, yeah, that's amazing. Um, what did you learn? Uh, what's the most important thing that you learned during your time with uh, Fiskonti or from your past? I, I learned everything all from my mistakes. Yeah. So nobody helped me. Mm -hmm. I, I was manufacturing, I was doing, but I always believed that 
and promising a little bit less of what I could deliver. Mm -hmm. Because so, if I promise you 10 and I deliver 7, you think you've lost 3. True. But if I deliver 7, but I promise you 5, the I'm, result is the same. I'm happy. But you think you uh, earn 2. Yeah. So this is always, always, always my you know, philosophy and my life of style. There mm -hmm. are people who talk a lot. Yeah. I don't talk too much and I listen a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, for example, with Bob Company, Mm -hmm. I was uh, the man who was uh, the old Bok, now also his son died, Wolfgang. Mm -hmm. But uh, the last project he was made for me. Yeah. And when I, I, I went there in 1988, they told me, you want to make a, 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 a pen company, good luck, <laughs> he told me. <laughs> and still, when he died, we were still friends. Yeah. So, I, I, and when he made 60 years anniversary of of, uh, of Bob Company, I was invited as their sole Italian partner. Wow. I'm very proud of yeah, that. Yeah, that's, uh, I can imagine that you're proud and of that. And I can find, you can imagine, all the American brands and all the German brands mm -hmm. at that event. And, yeah. and I'm, you know, let's say, you know, when you start and you are nobody just arrived in this business, people, mm -hmm. somebody, not even know me or whatever, and you become, you know, and they left to, to my partner, the company, they can work by himself. I'm very proud, very proud of that. Yeah, I can imagine. We have a question from our social media, media followers, uh, this time from Pieter888. And the question is, how long does it take for you to design a pen and till it's operating? Wow, nobody ever asked me this question. Yeah. This is the first time in 35. <laughs> Everybody wants to ask me how long it takes yeah. to make a pen. It is, is impossible to us. You know, there are pens that I design in one afternoon, mm -hmm. and some pens takes you know a couple of years mm -hmm. to go to the end. Yeah. So it's very difficult. It's not uh, easy to us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you, you get you know the right you know things, and you go. Now you know that I make all my mostly by by hand my designs, mm -hmm. but now I have. Uh, in, uh, in Pinay, uh, uh, one of my friends that has an excellent 3D designer, it's much easier to go mm. in a computer 3D and design pens in that way because it's quite faster. Mm. You can change, adjust the shapes in, in, in seconds, yeah. like the other ways you have to make, make a samples and mm -hmm. then come back. I still remember that when I made the divine proportion, I went personally to the turning machine and to the guy changed the, the you know with the samples in front of me I was changing every time you know mm -hmm. but uh, there are pens it took me even a couple of years to be made yeah. for example just you know in, in front of us the uh, back to the future yeah. was very difficult to come to the end mm -hmm. because the connection the precise the even with the computer uh, let's say with the 3d hybrid design mm -hmm. you know was difficult to come to the right solution to every part and pens uh, for example like uh, the great beauty mm -hmm. it came in one afternoon okay so they just came up in your mind and you draw it and everything was uh, as it should be yeah if you talk about you know, great beauty was designed to be a classical pen mm -hmm. so easier yeah easier because uh, a nice pen is a nice pen and many people likes not too fancy pen but very classical very mm -hmm. stylish this is what i wanted to be for the pinider medium range mm -hmm. medium high yeah now it's not medium anymore it's medium high. <laughs> uh, different if you talk about uh, for uh, the back to the future mm -hmm. it is a, a weird design something unique, unique so this has to be much more careful because mm -hmm. you may go from a very nice design to something very, you know, like a, like a toy. Yeah. So it's much more risky. Yeah. Um, uh, do people Anyhow, I'm sorry for interrupting you, but I am, as a man, I like very classical pen. Yeah. You know, my, my style, my, when I, I, I started, I relaunched the the pens in celluloid the first brand to make pens in celluloid mm -hmm. and this can be only one thing tells you the golden age of pens yeah that was 1920 1930 with celluloid and this is how i was born yeah 
for Pinaide and making pens much more unusual. Mm-hmm. Even in Fred Visconti, have designed a lot of pens very, you know, let's say, not exactly uh, everyday pens. Mm-hmm. Um, do you notice a difference in collectors uh, from different uh, world parts? For example, Asian collectors are different than American collectors or European collectors. Do they uh, get uh, more attention to a specific detail? I'll, I have to say that usually the difference is based from uh, the, um, the area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody knows that uh, old Asia, we are very picky people. Yeah. You know, so very, very uh, careful to the details, uh, the precision. Mm-hmm. So usually uh, pens made for that area has to be very... So handmade things are not... Handmade is fine, but it has to be perfect. Yeah. Like uh, Americans are much more, you know, open-minded in, mm-hmm. in that uh, in that point, mm-hmm. and there are difference based from example of the area. America likes uh, very uh, colorful pens mm-hmm. much more than Europeans. Yeah, and I'm used to say that uh, uh, America always gives you a chance. Yeah, I mean, if you go to want to sell a pen in the States, and this happened to me. Yeah. They, are, they tell you, show me what you have, probably I will buy it. Yeah. If you go to the Europe, they ask you, tell me who you are, probably I will, I will buy it. Mm-hmm. It's a different approach. Yes, mm-hmm. completely. In, in, in the Far East, people are still very much, you know, uh, let's say brand, you know, uh, dependent, you know, they like brands. Yeah. They like brands. But uh, when uh, I started in the Far East, uh, was the market was so new that I uh, was able to build a brand at yeah. that time. Think about the start in Don Kong, it was 1991. Yeah. And uh, I think I know every single you know, collector in that time. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have home in Hong Kong for many years. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, the Italian pens, uh, in general, uh, why are they different from, like, say, Japanese pens or German pens or uh, American pens? What makes them different? First of all, for, for me, uh, uh, American pens are not really many in the market yeah. anymore. You know, we have a, a Parker that is not American anymore yeah. because uh-huh. I think it's made in England uh, mm-hmm. right now. And um, uh, Italian pens compared to any other, there is a lot of handmade. Mm-hmm. But this is something that is a tradition in Italy, you know, because even you know, leather, look mm-hmm. leather, all the big brands of the world, from Vuitton to uh, they make their leathers in Florence. Yeah. So this is something that Italians are very, very good to act. Mm-hmm. At. Uh, we are able to move out very well our our hands. So. Mm-hmm. Handmade pens are very good in Italy. Mm-hmm. Japanese, they have a completely different approach. They mm-hmm. make excellent things, but much more, you know, industrial designs. Mm-hmm. Germans, they have, I would like to say, German brands for me are very keen to tradition. Yeah. My, my personal, you know, opinion. opinion. Yeah. My personal opinion. Yeah. So, so I would like to say that the brand reflects a little bit you know, the land where they are made at. Yeah. I miss my opinion. Yeah. If the founder pen world is mirrored to the animal kingdom, what animal would Pinaida be? He's an elegant animal, not mm-hmm. aggressive. Yeah. Not aggressive. It's also Maybe. an elegant brand, so... So, uh, Pinaida is a bit of everything what I would like to call a lifestyle. Yeah. So, let's say, is a little bit, you know, old because the values of Pinaide are the values probably of our father. Mm-hmm. So something that is established, yeah. so but elegant, sick, you know, very interesting. Mm-hmm. And um, I would have to say, I don't know if this you can call modern or not, mm-hmm. but for sure is a man that stands out the mass. Yeah. This is my opinion. Yeah. Excellent. So you're now with the company for four years. What did you do uh, until now for Pinaida? And what else is coming up, of course? <laughs> Think about it. When I came here, I, as I told you, I get, you know, carte blanche to, you know, 
work mm-hmm. and, and develop the pen department. Mm-hmm. As pen expert and basically the man who has to build everything. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I built the technology, the design, and even, you know, not only the design, but even the symbols of pen either. Mm-hmm. Because a pen is a, a very, in a of a very standard, is a round object most of the time, mm-hmm. is about 14, uh, 15 centimeters long. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to make it's about them, the details. Yeah, we have to give them some differentiation. Yeah. If you want to be it recognizable. So, first of all, I work on the shape, mm-hmm. the great beauty, and then the avatar, I'm trying to give to every shape a certain price point. Mm-hmm. To, to create a range. Yeah. The second thing I did is the clip. Mm-hmm. That is one of the symbols most important in the pen because it stands out of the pocket. Mm-hmm. One of the few parts of the pen That's what you that see. is visible. Mm-hmm. And the clip, I decided that the symbol of Pinada should be something very classy. That is the feather. Yeah. That is not the first writing instrument of the human being, of sure. human people, but has been for uh, nearly 1,000 years, yeah, uh, for a eight, long time. Uh, eight long time. <laughs> you know, just remember the the name of the rose, <laughs> you yeah. know, the book, you know, yeah. uh, with the monk writing with the feather. Yeah. I learned lately, uh, recently, that the feather was just cheaper than the calmos really? to get there. Everybody can get a feather as a chicken to get a feather. Yeah, true. <laughs> but the, the calamus who have to get from the cane is mm-hmm. to make it sharp was longer. Yeah. This changed after the death of Roman Empire. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's say, you know, uh, 800, you know, after Christ. Yeah. And uh, in the Middle Age, this changed quickly. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they decided that uh, the duck was probably the best keratin material for the feather. Okay. Yeah. And you know, at the time was very uh, to write. You have to make your own point with mm-hmm. the knife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, cut the point. Luckily, we do not have to do that anymore. <laughs> we have you to make the knife. <laughs> As I told you, you know, the first uh, clock appeared in Florida in the 13th century, mm-hmm. but the first uh, fountain pen we have been seeing in Florida only in. Uh, beginning of the uh, 19, so yeah. it's many years later. And uh, this is the feather, is a symbol of Pinaider mm-hmm. for uh, the clip. And down, then from, since then I already made the four different, I'm going for the fifth different feathers. Yeah. <laughs> for so the new model. For the new models. Mm-hmm. And uh, the great beauty was the opening, you know, uh, range the avatar and then I made a, a, a number of differentiation inside the great beauty there are you know the forged carbon the mm-hmm. honeycomb where okay, what I call the spin-off you know yeah, different, yeah, yeah. you know variation on the same thing yeah within the model some different yeah, exactly so yeah. you take basically the past model and you can uh, develop in different kind of materials or even adding some, you know, mechanical parts mm-hmm. like the mystery filler that was yeah. uh, something just something a, a, a nice idea, you know. Yeah. Century, uh, don't forget yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the century of before. Yeah. The avatar is the for sure the opening uh, area, mm-hmm. and um, again, this was developed in different kind of material, in transparent the famous uh, UR material, yeah. unbreakable. Yeah. Now, recently we have put it, you know, so the gold nib to give the chance to people to have the gold nib at a much more affordable price. Mm-hmm. And now we are going to see the new coming that is called Metropolis. Okay. Mm-hmm. That is a super secret, you know, uh, developing. I will not tell anybody. Okay. No worries. Ah, but there is a video, I think. No, no. Oh, okay. No. It's a... It will be ready to last in the <laughs> next uh, few months. Okay. It will be uh, based uh, lower than, mm-hmm. um, than, um, than Avatar. Yeah. We'll have a smaller nib okay. because Avatar is a number six. So mm-hmm. it's quite big for yeah. that size of pen. So I, you know, I just designed a new nib for Pinada is number five. Mm-hmm. 
and uh, we'll have some good reason to buy it. All right. All packed at once. Okay. And that's coming in the next few months. In the next few months. Okay. And there also will be another, you know, spin-off of the Great Beauty. Mm -hmm. Basically, it will be very similar. Yeah. And will be called the Alchemist. Okay. So just imagine something, you know, magic. <laughs> Some magic going on. That's always good, Magic right? going on. Yeah. And this is, I think, is one of the nicest story yeah. I did in all my life. Is a, a pen was born from a, a, an incredible good story. Mm -hmm. That would be very nice to come to Netherlands and yeah, show you. It can come in, no problem. Um, we expect that uh, you know the 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 mood coming back from this uh, uh, disaster that yeah. happened to us, and uh, I would like to kill the COVID with alchemist. I, I don't think it's possible. I, I hope it's possible <laughs> because this, uh, <laughs> this should stop. Yeah. And basically, this is what I did, you know, mm -hmm. is to build a, a brand under different designs, mm -hmm. covering every niche from 100 euros to uh, actually 1,000 euros, mm -hmm. even if their man is passing because of his super, uh, you know, difficult designs and so on. Yeah. Is there something else that you would like to share? Uh, about a new development, uh, I know what you're thinking about, but you are a bad boy, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell you about the new project. All I have right. something unique coming. Okay, unique. let's give that a secret and then you will communicate that with the time. Otherwise, there. what I will tell you next time, if I tell you everything at once, that's true. I will nothing to tell you the next that's time. True, that's true, that's well, true. Or, my, you have always new or my, my tree will become without apples anymore. <laughs> Um, Dante, thank you so much for having us, for sharing your thoughts, opening your mind and doing this interview with us. Um, since I know that you like motorcycles, in the Netherlands we also have cycles. Here's this special gift for you. But this is I hope you do not have this one yet. This is a motorcycle with human power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget that uh, Netherlands are all flat. Yeah, I know. Florence, there are hills. <laughs> yeah, but that's okay. You you are a sport of guys. So okay. You can manage. It. Okay. No worries. No worries. Thank you so much. You're <laughs> um, You also have something for us, or not actually for us, but for our viewers. This is the pen that I want to give the people that are coming mm -hmm. as a gift from Penade. Wow. First of all, for your nice visit here mm -hmm. and for the people that can appreciate, you know, the manufacturing yeah. of Penade and I can say my creativity. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is, uh, you know, the blue bee yeah. and the material that I designed is uh, designed to create arcs mm -hmm. on the side of the pen. Yeah, it's beautiful. Thank you so much for this, this generous a, giveaway. This is a nice yeah. giveaway for your customers. Yeah. Well, if you would like to win this beautiful giveaway of Danta, uh, what you only what you have to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow P Neither on Instagram and comment below this video what you think of P Neither and of Danta. Um, and then in three days after we upload this video, we will pick a winner of this. Wow, this is. This is amazing giveaway, really. Dante, thank you so much. Let uh, me say a, a hello to yeah, my yeah. to my Netherlands friends. Yes, of course. I have many since uh, many years I'm coming to Netherlands yeah. to promote my fans. Yes. And um, it happened to me mm -hmm. that during one of my race mm -hmm. in uh, Mugello, the speed track, yeah. a Netherlands lady, very nice, I have to say, yeah. beautiful, <laughs> she approached me and say, you are Dante del Vecchio. I said... I thought you were a legend. I said, yes. Say, this guy, uh, you know, told me that you are Dante, say. And she, in a sudden, tried to uh, hug me and yeah. kiss me. Oh. I said, thank you so much. It was <laughs> beautiful, I <have> say. <laughs> say, I graduated with your pants. Wow. 
and I have always one with me and was showing me her disability. Mm-hmm. This makes me very, you know, yeah, uh, sure. that is know. something that will always stay And you, this right? was not a pen environment, it was a racing yeah. environment, nothing to do something with that. Something completely different. And she was told that I was a pen maker. Just a pen from you. And, and the then she learned that I was the founder of Visconti. Uh-huh. She started to hug me, you know, <laughs> in front of her husband, you know, so, oh, uh, okay. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice story. Yeah, it's a nice, nice story. story. Yeah, Dutch people are so, always really with kissing. I say, you know, okay. Normally, I would give you a this, hug right this now. Makes, uh, this makes uh, the story is because a pen can be really something for a life. You know, yeah. she was so amazed to be really one of my pens, and then mm-hmm. to discover the maker of the pen, she made it not to fall in love with me, but something yeah. very nice. Yeah. I, I, to make a I, pre- gesture. I appreciate. It. Yeah. If you don't mind, I'm not going to kiss you right now. Also because of the social distancing, that's not allowed. This is me. the first reason. The second reason, you are not a nice girl. <laughs> I am an old, old way man. <laughs> Thank you again for the interview. And uh, well, I hope to see you soon again. Maybe at the Dutch Pen Show. Why not? Yeah. Why not? And uh, well, I hope you guys like the video. Good luck with the giveaway and uh, well, goodbye. Bye bye.